This is Somerset House in London, and this is a really posh tent in the middle of Somerset House in London. And what that is, is the Transformation Tech Fest, which has been put on by Bosch to explore the connected, autonomous and electrified future that may or may not be useful. So one of the things that we're going to actually drive or ride in, not actually drive at all, at the Bosch Transformation event is this. This is called the Easy Mile. So we are in uh, the Easy Mile. Is this like um, uh, an automated minibus? Yeah, so yes. completely driverless. Yeah. As you can see, there's no uh, back and front, no steering wheel. Yeah. Um, fully electric. Fully electric, okay. Yeah. Designed for first and last mile application. It's designed to be a complement to mass transit system. So we use GPS, uh, LiDARs and, and cameras to locate ourselves and navigate. Yeah. So it's more flexible in a way that you can pretty much install it or, or, or put the system in place uh, anywhere where it makes sense. So you want me to press the green button? Okay, and off we go. Okay, so this simulates... So, somebody, so he was walking in front. Oh, he's... And so as, you can, as you can see, the vehicle adjusts his speed to, uh, to the pedestrian. Yeah. Let's pretend he's he, just like a really yeah. drunk, unattentive... And if, he, and if he would jump in front of the vehicle, that would, that would trigger an emergency stop and the right. vehicle would just stop. Okay. Yeah. So how fast can this go? I mean, it, uh, what are its parameters? So, in theory, it can go up to 40 kilometers per hour. Yeah. Uh, usually, we, we drive anywhere from 10 to 20 kilometers per hour. The, so, Easy Mile is a, a French uh, company. Yeah. Uh, we do, we focus on software. Uh, for the embedded software for the vehicle and the fleet management system that is on top of, uh, of the vehicle and um, manage different uh, manage a fleet or can manage a fleet of type of vehicles. Yeah. It's manufactured by um, our partner Ligier. Oh, no, Ligier. Uh, Ligier, yeah. yes. Yeah. So they are they, they do the hardware, the body, the, the chassis. Because they've made electric cars in the eighties. The, yeah, they still they still make. 15,000 cars a year, uh, so small cars. They do e-scooters for the French Post. Uh, do they? Yeah. So, yeah, they've been in business for, I don't know, well, for 40, 50 years. Yeah. Depending on the type of environment uh, you'll be uh, you'll be driving. If it's a, an environment with a lot of pedestrians, you probably not you don't want to go too fast, so you just go at five or 10. So any, are any of these being trialed or have been bought sure. um, in France? Uh, we, uh, we, we made uh, four, 40 uh, of this uh, series yeah. uh, and we have vehicle in operation in uh, Australia, Singapore, uh, France, in Toulouse, in Germany, oh, okay. uh, in the US. Okay, um, so all over then? All, all over the place and, and we're going, to, uh, we're going to, to, to start producing another uh, AT vehicle in the next uh, 12 months. There you go, that's the easy mile. Should we have a look at the front and the back of it? Can I just have a quick look around the back? Sure. So it doesn't have a front. It's the same. It's the same both ends. It's, it's symmetrical. So you see the the, the, the sensor on the bottom at, at the detection sent lidars, and the one on here is also a volumetric uh, sensors. This one here. This one here. Yeah. So the sensors in the, in these slits here. Yeah. Here. There's a camera here, you can see it here. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. And then if you step back, I think you see on the roof, there's a black box. You can see another LiDAR for localization. So this one go reach uh, the buildings over there, for example, and that's how we map. It's just like the white, okay. Yeah, how we okay. map the environment. And there's also the GPS antenna and then modem. So it uses the, its GPS knowledge with what's really here. Yes, so we use buildings, GPS. Yeah. We also have a um, sen um, inertial measurement unit and an encoder in the wheels. We fusion the old data to get our exact position. What's the range of the um, of, of the, the system at the moment? In terms of kilometers? Yeah, or kilo yeah, kilometers. Well, it's more about hours. I would say ten to fifteen hours in operation oh, daily, okay. depending on how much AC you use. Uh, especially if you operate in Singapore or Dubai, then of course, it's probably closer to ten. Yeah. Uh, if you're in a climate where you need, don't really need AC, then it's more fifteen or sixteen hours. Okay. Okay. I've been trying to think of what 
the Ligier Easy Mile reminds me of. And it's the Johnny Cab from Total Recall. Where am I? You're in a Johnny Cab. I mean, what am I doing here? I'm sorry. Would you please rephrase the question? Huh? How did I get in this taxi? The door opened. You got in. So Andrea, tell me about what you've got here. I know you've got lots of interesting things, controllers, chargers, motor, battery pack. So what you can see on this table is our 48 volt base powertrain system that we put not only in our scooters or sports bike, but also in uh, small cars. And uh, yeah, it's comprised of all of these components. Yeah. And depending on the range and performance you want to have, and depending on the vehicle type, you just scale up the components. So for example, for the scooter, yep. we use uh, each component one time. But if you uh, put it in the car, you will uh, double the motor, double the charger, and you put up to six batteries. So okay. one system fits all. For example, um, if you have a scooter or a sports bike, yep. this is between four and 11 kilowatts of performance. Yep. So you use each component one time or you put a second battery to increase the range. Yep. And then if you take the car, you need of course more uh, power. Yep. So this is between 14 and 20 kilowatts. So you put two motors and two charger yep. and up to six batteries. So presumably all of this is for to be sold business to business. This is, yeah. but you could presumably retrofit this to a, like a motorbike that already has a, a, a combustion engine. Yeah, that's that's the way we did it with the Schwalbe. It's a very famous combustion scooter from back in Eastern Germany. Yeah. And what we did is we put this system, like a plug and play system inside the scooter and enabled the elect electrification. So as it stands at the moment, all this stuff, because th this has everything, the battery management system, the yeah. brain, like the whole control yeah, system, yeah, yeah. the charger that is uh, actively cooled. Yeah, it's like a, a complete system. You don't have to add anything. Okay, what's the spec of this motor? Well, this is a 10.5 kilowatt motor. It's nine kilo and it has an integrated inverter. So it's also uh, recuperating energy while braking. Oh, it has regen on board? Yeah, on board. And it's on quite board. small. It's, it's quite... very small, it's very handy. And it's from the automotive sector. So actually like what we did in our uh, system is we put all the components that we already have in Bosch from the automotive sector. Yeah. Because this one is automotive proven, like we use it in several, several hybrid cars what all do you over use the in? world. I want to know, what, what, what do you use that in? <laughs> what is that in already? So for example, the Audi uh, is, uh, as a hybrid version is e using this one. The e-tron? Yeah. It uses that? Yeah. Does it really? Yeah, it's like from the normal automotive uh, portfolio. This is to do with, with, with your 48 volt propulsion as well, is it? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. The system also includes a display that you can either put as a standalone version or integrate it directly in your vehicle. And also the U-Drive Connect app. The U-Drive Connect app um, connects the whole system, the state of battery, the system settings. It predicts you the range that is remaining. Uh, it tracks your last location. So whenever you get lost, especially in big cities, your U-Drive Connect app will bring you back to your vehicle. Right, okay. I could see this working really well in, in, a, in a, a vehicle that's already been made, that already had an engine in it. So instead of redesigning the whole thing and wasting quite a lot of resources, you can actually retrofit a kit yeah. like this. How many other, how many other companies are, are taking on this system at the moment, do you know? You cannot really see them driving around a lot because we are quite young. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the Schwabe is on the market really newly this month. The first oh, deliveries that. this month, yeah. Well, well, let's go and have a quick, let's go and have yeah. a better look at it. This was a very famous um, combustion scooter back in Eastern Germany. In the communist era. Yeah, okay. exactly. Because I do recognize the style of it. So this would have been an old two-stroke from the sort of, what, 60s, 70s, 80s? Yeah, what they did is like, there were several tries to electrify the, the combustion Schwalbe, yeah. but Govitz was able to do it with our powertrain system. So show me what it's now got then that's, that's Bosch. Well, on this one, you cannot really good see it, 
I mean, uh, it's the, hidden under. Yeah, the, the batteries are inside here underneath it, yeah. so you cannot see it, and also the charger. One special thing is our powertrain system doesn't need any special equipment for charging. It's uh, simply just using a normal domestic 200 oh, a normal socket. socket. Is that a USB? Yeah, you can also recharge your mobile phone while driving. Oh, well, that's <laughs> always useful. So you've got the retro style of a, uh -huh. of a classic East German yeah. kind of icon. Is, is this like the sort of Trabant of the motorbike, of the moped world? Like that kind of East, <laughs> East German, no, it's, which is like an icon. It's a cult It is, it is, uh, definitely it is. Uh, I, li I like Trabants, I can say. I actually, like whenever we were on the street with that, so they, the first deliveries uh, were this month. So it's brand new in Germany. Right, okay. And whenever you see someone riding on the street, like all the people are staring and saying, oh my God, this is back on the road. So yeah, it's okay. great. It's great. It's a big symbol for, for, yeah, for Germans. But then, but then we've got this, which is also yeah. powered by Bosch. Yeah. Which is the El Moto. I can see this is much more exposed bike than the, the scooter. We've got one of your motors here. Yeah, so uh, as I told you, the special thing is that we can put one system for any kind of vehicle. Yeah. So the Schwabe is uh, a scooter that is a 50 cubic equivalent. And this one here has a bit more power. But we use the same motor. So like as our motor has a 10.5 peak performance, we yeah. can use it either in the Schwalbe um, or um, use it also in sports applications like this one. So this is like a sports bike. It's a sports bike. Yeah, it's yeah. a 125 cubic equivalent. Okay. And so you can see our components very well here. So we have the the drive unit once more. The battery yeah. is here. Yeah, yeah. And then we have the display here as a standalone version, not integrated, as you can see here. Here it's integrated, uh, okay. and here yeah. it's standalone. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as you can see, the motor is uh, open. Like there is no coverage or anything. Yes, completely um, exposed, yeah. And it's not a problem at all because uh, as it is an automotive proven component, yeah. it's not a problem with dust or rain or anything else. Okay, great. And how many battery packs has this one got? Only one. This and that's sufficient, has... yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, it must be very light. This so we vertically put only stacked. Yeah. And this one's got one? This one can be provided with one or two. You can decide oh, okay. because this company has a um, kind of a configurator online, yeah. myschwalbe.com, yeah. where you can decide if you want to have one battery or two batteries, depending on the range you want to have. I see, I see. So that's great. So it just shows you the different types of packaging that yeah. you can get out of all these components here. Yeah. And now we've got a car, which again is not made by you, but it uses your system. Yeah. Like as Bosch, we are not uh, a vehicle manufacturer, yeah. but what we do supply for this uh, very nice uh, city car is also the powertrain. And it's the same powertrain that we have in the Schwalbe or in the sports bike. That little motor. That yeah. little motor, yeah, yeah it's yeah. unbelievable, it's but good. it works. Um, because our powertrain system is scalable, so yeah. as you can um, multiply the components, it's also possible to supply uh, the powertrain system for this car. Yeah. Because then you just put two motors and up to six batteries. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. So, so this has two motors in. It two motors. It has two charger, yeah. and then six batteries. I really like stuff like this because for me, um, I like the whole retro design idea anyway you take this is taking a sort of communist icon from East Germany resurrecting it mo in a modern way using electric propulsion and in this case propulsion that is, is off the shelf for Bosch um, any spare parts that you'd ever need uh, any repair work can be done under warranty or you can buy the individual parts so it actually makes an awful lot of sense so just go just go. go just go all right <laughs> I'm just gonna go then See, back in the olden days, um, there were a few electric motorbikes. Uh, one of them was called a, um, one of them was a Californian bike, which I've actually tried to buy an example of, called an Oranthetic Charger, catchy name. And it used two car batteries, essentially, and it was uh, either 12 volts or 24 volts. So first gear was 12, second gear was 24. So it wasn't exactly progressive, but now, of course, Got lovely progressive throttles like this thing. Just nice and quiet and relaxed. So you take the idea of an old, you know, retro East German 
moped. It's been reinvented, but with 21st century zero emission tech. In my head, I could be Paul Weller. This could be zero emission quadrophenia. Just been overtaken by an electric bike. Of course, that's got Bosch propulsion in it as well, that thing. I wonder how many times I could ride this around the exhibition before I get told to stop. This is quite addictive. So this is not a this is not a step through scooter. Obviously, this is an actual motorbike, like a 125 engine equivalent. But using the same motor as that, using the same battery packs, of course, all that stuff that Andrea's just showed me. Just packaged in a different machine. Just, just only put take it in the go. go. Yeah. yeah, it goes good, yeah. It goes good. Now you can take a run and please watch out, it's really dangerous with the grunt. Okay. It's really dangerous, so let's go for a ride. Riding around Somerset House at uh, six miles an hour. Obviously, uh, we're not exactly going to be uh, flailing this thing because we're in Somerset House courtyard and we have under strict instructions to do about 10 kilometers an hour, but it gives you a little flavor of. I really like um, electric motorbikes. They feel very graceful and smooth. And I like it, it's very cool, very cool. I didn't use my indicators. This is actually the the thing I came to um, to, to this event to see the Excellent. most because I've read about it in the last couple of weeks and it's really interesting to me. This is called the e-axle. Yeah. So to those at home, explain to me this lovely little compact piece of kit in front of us. What does it do? Um, it's it's basically a unit that can be scaled from 50 to about 300 kilowatts. Right. And the idea is it's a, a compact unit which has the power electronics, so DC to AC conversion, DC to DC. Also the e-machine which delivers the part of the wheels. Yeah. Also the gearbox which goes in there like you can see. Yeah. Also a park lock system. So pretty much your entire drive unit if you like so is in this one unit here. Yeah. So everything apart from batteries? Everything apart from the batteries, exactly. You can look at them on the front wheels, you can have them on the rear wheels, you can have on both or you can have it as an IC engine powering on one of the wheel axles and yeah. this powering the other any which way you want. So the whole idea is that from a packaging and scaling perspective, yeah. this is something that works for pretty much all customers. Can you tell me more about the spec of the motor? It's, um, it's, a, it's an AC motor? It's an AC motor. It's a permanent magnet AC synchronous motor. Yeah. Um, we, I think industry in general is not looking towards induction motors anymore. Pretty much everyone's heading towards the permanent magnet motor, is mostly that for the efficiency. It's the efficiency is or the, or the strength of them, the robustness or the... The robustness is also, I don't think the major criteria is efficiency mostly because the induction motors are somewhere between 80 to 85%. This is more um, over 90% efficiency, okay. yeah. depending on how and where you're connected. But so we're trying to reduce any losses we have. And that's the major advantage with electric vehicles, you know. Yeah. You're looking at gas or diesel uh, lesser than 50% or just close to 30% conversion. And this is more or less 90, 95%. Yeah. So I've had an interesting day at Transform. Motion, capital letters, Bosch's tech event. We've seen some really amazing technology, some of which is probably gonna come into play once the legislations are decided. The autonomy thing, there's some uses to it. There's some weirdness about it. Electric motorbikes, but also the most, the thing that turned me on the most is the 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 e axle. I think that's great. It looks like a really good turnkey plug-in solution to turn either an existing IC car into electric or to make a lot of other OEMs put electric cars together for less money. So yeah, it's good. I've enjoyed it an awful lot, and it stopped raining. 